Casual Magic has been brought to you by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can get cool stuff. Use the code CASUAL to get 5% off of your sale. And then also by Coalesce Apparel, where you can get really cool t-shirts and stuff. And use the code Casual Magic to get 10% off your sale. And by Architect, a deck hosting website that doesn't really sell anything, but they like me and I like them. So kindly use them. And now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to Casual Magic, the show where we talk about the fun side of Magic the Gathering. My name is Shivan Fudd, Casual Magic is brought to you by Cool Stuff, Architect, and Coalesce. Also, once a quarter-ish, I would like to remind you folks, I do have a Patreon and a coffee. You can find them on my Twitter feed. Uh, your support helps me do this because uh, I'm unemployed. That means that this stuff costs my money. Uh, and that's much harder to do than when the corporations are paying for it. Um that being said, today I have a very interesting episode. Uh, I discovered this gent whilst on Twitter, while, while talking to like other people about other things. Uh, this is CEDH Dad, who is one of the people who helps behind the scenes of a lot of CEDH community management stuff. But what interested me the most is this notion he had of a teacher's box, of a bunch of sort of intro to CEDH decks. And as I talked to him further, I discovered that there's a whole lot more about like just getting into the game and understanding the nature of commander and like you put on panels and have like yeah. intellectual discussions and stuff and yeah. i was like oh i need to talk to you more about this <laughs> yeah we do a couple of things we have some fun so so yeah bro welcome uh thank you so much for joining me today thank you i realize uh, cdh is not necessarily my my speed but i do appreciate it and i appreciate a lot of what the community does and more importantly I appreciate how good the community is at evangelizing itself and at teaching people. And I think there's a lot to learn for other tiers of a commander in ways we can become more open, friendly, and welcoming to other people. Absolutely. hundred percent. So can you tell me a little bit about this teaching box you have? What is this? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I guess the 22nd elevator speech for it would be, um, you know, six decks that are CEDH and are simple to kind of grok, to understand, um, to walk through, you know, whatever the lines may be. And that's it, basically, right? So the, one of the big problems that we have as a community is a lot of the decks are very nuanced and they're brewed over an extended period of time. That's a true. Hundreds of games, you know, card decisions down to the most minute detail right when to do this when to do that and all these little micro decisions and we see these things a regular commander too right oh, yeah. you know everybody you have a titania deck i know you do because you and i have talked about me having one as well and the thousands of games that we've played on these things mm -hmm. same process right so to try to present that information in a way that's easy and digestible and to do it on the fly mm that's what the teacher's box is is for it's to go okay you want to play cdh or you have a preconceived notion of what cdh is i'm going to show you that those things are wrong or maybe some are right mm. but here are some decks that you don't have to spend you know three hours reading a primer and walking through all these crazy things okay like you can just do the thing i feel i need to we'll tell you right now <laughs> my first introduction to cdh someone suggested to me i was at like gp vegas 2018 or 2019 or something let me guess read a database and a primer no they were like yo okay. i'll bring my i'll bring my gitrog deck and you can play it and oh no i, like, I love gitrog oh, and land no. <laughs> later on as i was playing it and i was like wait how does this win Lo and somebody and had to literally help walk me through the mm -hmm. win yep. and then later when i did the look i was like there's a 40 page oh, yeah. treatise yes. on how this works yes. and i still can't tell you how this works you have to do some weird dacmore salvage loop oh, yeah. it is yep. Yep. maybe the most complicated deck i've ever seen in my life and i've been mm -hmm. playing for a thousand years get rog and anala are there there are every deck has like a little thing that's theirs right goto count to 13 you're good right yeah uh winoto turn them sideways figure it out Gitrog and Anala each have sections of their primers that are anywhere between like 12 and 20 pages long. And it's one combo line. 
It's not okay, first, multiple let me, let things. Let me break that it's sentence down for a second. Line. <laughs> let me break that sentence down for a second because this is something we don't see in normal in, in lower tiers of EDH, which is they're primers. First off, yeah. somebody has taken the time <laughs> to write a goddamn essay about yes. these decks to help you understand what you're supposed to do. And then two, combo lines. That's the thing yeah. I never even thought about until someone, like whenever I'm talking, like, oh, I, when I talk to CDH people, I'm like, oh, how do you deck one? It's like, oh, yeah, you know, I've got three ad nos lines. And I'm like, what in the so, hell is an yeah. ad nos line? Yep. Like, you guys are talking about it like <clears> it's like, you know, cells. It's second through, nature. Like, it's just what we do. <laughs> yeah, it's like you guys are talking about it like it's stem cell research or something. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, I've got thirteen like cell lines that are viable for this bacteria. I'm like, what? What? Yeah. The? I play yeah. creatures and they hit you. <laughs> what the it. hell is this? That's it. Yeah. And it's like, it, like so. So to get back to, like to the teachers box part, it's the conversation that we're having right now. The picture that we're trying to draw right now of I have a thousand things I'm trying to do. This is all the stuff. This is the 20 page dissertation to, to get it done. My five year old is, is jumping in here right now, but it's to take that conversation and smooth it all out. Mm. All of the pieces and everything like that. Like, what is a breach line? How's your deck win? Wins through a breach line. Well, what is a breach? What line? does that mean? <laughs> okay. Well, so I'm going to put a brain freeze and LED and a, you know, uh, the breach out there i'm gonna walk you through yeah right i'm gonna gonna walk you through what all those things are we do all that stuff with like winota for example what does winota do how does the lines play out how do the turns play out and we actually like walk through all of the deck to make sure that all that stuff happens and you understand what you're trying to get through and then we'll go through some mulligans because right, hmm. it's important to have a starting hand. Oh yeah, like functional. that's the thing. Like in in command in in like you know casual commander, the idea of like ah you mull until you got something playable in like CEDH it's like oh no this is a serious decision that makes a difference. <laughs> like yeah. you better have like two free responding counter spells in your hand or you're gonna cry or whatever. And it's like <laughs> it is like I think part of what the big turnoff for me was is that when I play commander, like I'm not saying. People like to misjudge me as saying, oh, Shivam is, you know, too dumb to play CEDH. No. Like, no, man, I've played for a long time. I can figure it out. Yeah. But when I'm playing Commander, my goal is less, is more relaxed, let's enjoy chat, yeah. play Marvel Snap on your phone, whatever it is. You know, like, I'm not, like, hyper engaged in the game. I'm in the... Yeah. I'm in the environment that we're in. I'm I'm here to engage with my friends. But, like, these decks are so deeply complicated that you have to pay attention not only to your hand and to make sure that your combos and your whatnot are working but also to what are the other three players at the table doing how will they interact with you how does that change what you're trying to do oh yeah and like that's the appeal of the game that's what makes it amazing and that's what makes people love it i think that's rad i also know that like the second you come to me and you're like, all right, I'm going to show you about combo lines in your deck. That's what I'm like. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know, I'll see it when you play it against me. How about that one? Uh, and it's like, that's not a, that's not like an insult to the format. That's just more of understanding where I want to be with the game. Yeah. But, but I think like what you're doing is such a better idea than going and handing me a, a get rock nah, deck. Yeah. So, so that was <laughs> like, so there's Look, been a couple of phases. Meant well. <laughs> they meant well, and it's we, really important. For me we to say normally that. do yeah. these days, anyway, right? So we we had our pub stomp phase long, long ago, which I really think, wasn't us, but it was kind of painted that way. Yeah, you know what? Like and we made it out the, of that. <laughs> I I reiterate over and over again. One of the most important things to come out of the fact that CDH has a name is that you and your group have managed to both give competitive players a place to go with a set of acceptable rules that they can understand and that can work with where it's okay to just go and say, I'm going to pull out my hammer and beat you in the face. And you're like, that's it. You're going to try, but Mm -hmm. I'm going to also let you because this is a table where that's okay. Yeah. And that gives pub stompers a place to go so that they don't pub stomp anymore. (laughs) Now they're not pub stompers. Now they're just enjoying games against people who also want to play that same tier. Yeah. I, so there's 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 a couple pieces of yeah. it I, I think right? like the pub we stompers least, I think are always going to exist. Sure, but we, we just are the ones reduced that, like, a lot of the bullying down to just yes. people who are jerks as opposed to yes. mismatched alignment. 
that's like yes <laughs> like i think one of the big deals is before people we would call pup stompers or whatever weren't doing it on purpose no, it's just, just they had a different expectation of what the game was yep. and we didn't have the language to tell them go do this instead or yep. hey bring a different deck to the table now the pub stompers that we're left with are just assholes and that's <laughs> that's humanity that's not something i can solve yeah. but at least we've taken off the large chunk of people who would be happier playing breach lines against yeah. your like ad nauseum lines against whatever you know yeah. whatever charles there's... mono white trash is coming up with <laughs> he's he, uh, charles is, i love His charles decks are he's, sig- he's amazing he's fantastic well, um, i always say when you play charles you're playing charles it doesn't matter what deck he brings you're playing his brain you're the rest of it he is irrelevant. he's a lovely he's absolutely absolutely brilliant. brilliant guy absolutely, absolutely brilliant. brilliant but the uh the an interesting point you were putting out there was something about a uh, you know mismatched levels and stuff mm. like that so whenever i go to an lgs i'll always hold my teacher's box it's always in a bag i have the binder i have the primers written out i have everything and i have a, a whole set through process that i walk through with people that usually takes anywhere between like 10 to 15 minutes if I want to do it and they want to learn. Hmm. But I always play a pickup game prior to that because I want to see where they're at. And I think it's important. And you see this with a lot of CDH players. I'm not going to say all of them, right? There are examples of the opposite of what I'm about to say, but we can dial it back. I can play Rael and I could sit down with it and it's four cards off of the, you know, the quote unquote database list. And I can run it out like that, but I don't have to do the thing. I can go, okay, they're playing at that level. Let me see where they're at. And then if they're up there on them breach lines and they're up there doing all that crazy stuff, I go, hey, do you, have you played CDH before? Because you're doing some interesting things. And and a couple of things fall out of that. One, you start to hear whatever their preconceived notion of CDH is. Sometimes it's right. Sometimes it's wrong. You know, and that's up to us again. Uh, you can see whether or not they actually know how close they are to it because a lot of people are so much closer than what they actually think they are. There's so many people that sit down at the table. They're like, Oh no, my Azami deck is fine. Don't even worry about it. It's perfectly good. It's great. And then on turn three, you're like, all right, I'm going to tap all this stuff, do all this thing, Thoracle win. And you're like, buddy, I I don't want to be that guy, Mm -hmm. but (laughs) you're way closer than you think you are. And here, here's why, and he, here's where it is. And I've had people dial it back, right? Where they go, oh, man, I didn't realize that. That's not the kind of game I want to play. Right. You know, and the, that was kind of the conversation you and I were having. It was like, I'm going in the other direction. I want people to play this kind of thing. A lot of people realize that, and you go, oh, my God, I don't want to play at that level. I want to play down here. Okay, so here's what you got to do. You got to take this, 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 and this, and dial these things back like 20%, and you're good to go. Just live your best life, but one you're thing, in there. <laughs> yeah. One thing I wish people understood, and this is the thing I try to advocate a lot of, but a lot of people get very defensive about. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, look, you have the choice of what you put into your deck and yep. you have the choice of what comes out of your hand, right? Yeah. Like you are the one in charge and they're like, no, I got to play the best thing. I'm like, why do you have to play the best thing? <laughs> it's like, well, there's nothing on the table. There's nothing online. Yeah, but I want to be the best. Okay, fine. You have a reason. You have like a goal and motivation. You want to be the best player. But at the same time, look at your table. That one person over there to your left has been struggling for mana the whole game. They finally got, you know, their third land out and they can finally play something. And you've got like the Doom Blade in your hand. Yeah. And you kill it. Yep. Yeah. What? Been there. Been there. (laughs) Right? Like, okay. So that person's been sitting struggling for like half an hour, 30, 40 minutes, whatever, begging for anything. And you stop the one thing. Yeah, it's the right thing to do. Obviously, that card could have done any number of things. Yeah. But was it the right thing to do for the table? Yeah. Was it the right thing to do for the game that you're looking for? If you're playing like at a level where everybody understands that we're here to win and we're here to do this, sure. Look, they got a bad draw. They got a bum draw. They played the one creature and ate it. Yeah. That's the breaks. Yeah. But if you're playing like at the LGS or if you're playing at like a kitchen table or something, and somebody puts out their one creature. Maybe aim your doom blade somewhere else. Yeah, let them or just let them get there. Yeah, yeah, like let them have a minute, right? Like let them. I, the so that's that's probably like I will go on record here with you with on this popular podcast, and and maybe this will end me, but I do think that rule zero in a lot of places is a crutch. Mm. But but I will say 
that in certain situations, much like the one you just said, where somebody's like, man, is screwed. Somebody doesn't have a creature out. Somebody's just getting their face beat in and there's no way to like resolve it. And we're playing a casual game, right? The intent is to have fun. That's where my, that's where like rule zero works best for me. I think card wise, we just live within the confines of the ban list and everything. That's fine. I love that. Let's do that. But like, I can't tell you how many times people will rip the top of their card and go, nope, not a land, discard, pass turn. And after like the second or third time I'm hearing that, I'm like, but just go in your deck, pull out two lands, put them on the field, and let's 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 play, right? Because I don't I get anything out of this. Discard. Yeah, exactly. I didn't, I'm not getting anything out of this. You're not getting anything out of this. Let's like go. You can do that. All right. I'm not. We're not breaking the game, but I want you to play. I want you to be in there to to do the thing. Right. Or if somebody comes out and the Azami turn three wins, and we're like, okay, we're we're not playing that kind of game. Like, okay, you got it, bud. Let's finish up this three pod and just, yeah, you take a minute and we'll, you know, so those kinds of changes and, and fluctuations in the rules. I, I enjoy those things. I don't, I, you know, I'm a little iffy on, you know, I, I don't like people using rule zero. <laughs> okay. I don't like people using rule zero as a means to be like, to break the rules. Right. Yeah. Like I don't like it. I mean, it's weird because I don't like to put the onus on people to have to beg to use their deck. Mm -hmm. But also at the same time, I'm like, look, it's, it, I hate when people are like, uh, you know, when someone says, hey, I would like to change this about the format. And people are like, why don't you just rule zero? I'm like, that's a discussion ender. That's not a useful yeah, way of rule zero. Oh my God, rule zero you. is not yes. here. Same. <laughs> yeah, rule, rule zero is not here to be a crutch and it's not here to be like a club. You, yeah. It's not here to bludgeon people to death and say like, oh, you just think you're fancy pants. Well, why don't you just rule zero? No, dude. Rule zero is simply a discussion that we're having to sit there and make sure that we're sitting at the table that's going to be the most fun yeah. for us. That's and I it think it, it, there's so many people that are in the camp of the what you first said of, you know, uh, to, to, to rule zero or something in just because I feel like rule zeroing something in, you know, every like whatever like, the look, rule may be. That, like, no. Let's have a discussion. Let's build the environment that we want to do together. Let's make it. Let's make. Let's make it happen. I hate like the if you come to me zero. and you're like, "Yo, you know what? <laughs> I've got a couple silver bordered cards in my deck. Is that okay?" I'd be like, "Sure, whatever, fine." Yeah. If you come to me and you're like, "I want to use Meld Titania as my new commander. Do you mind if I put the land in my command?" I'm like, "No, because that's going to break <laughs> fundamental rules of magic." <laughs> yeah. No, I have yeah. a problem with that. Right? Like, but. But it's like rule zero shouldn't be about that anyways. What rule zero should be is like, yo, um, I brought like my cool like soldiers deck and I brought this pre-con I've got. What mm -hmm. are we playing? And you're like, yes. well, you know, <laughs> um, we the three of us wanted to play CDH. Do you have a CDH deck? And I'm like, I don't. It's like, can I just lend you one here? Yeah. You can play go to helm. Let's go. Yeah. Boom. That's a rule zero discussion. Yeah. So I think so. <laughs> Um, what you were just saying about the rule zero discussion in the beginning of the game. Um, one of the very first times I ever met Olivia. Hmm. Um, one of my favorite people. Oh, um, she's one of my favorite people. I've interacted with her like three times and I'll never forget them. They're she's hmm. fantastic. Um, it was largely around. It was at command fest DC in like 2019 or something like that. And one of the, uh, when they were actually, when we met up with the, the CAG and we could sit down and ask questions, it was open forum and all that stuff. One of the questions that they posed was when you start a game, first off, how do you start it? Second off, what questions would you ask to kind of build what is the, the rule zero discussion? And that like changed my whole perspective on so many things because I was a guy that would adjust to what you said earlier you don't have to play the card in your hand you don't have to play i was that kind of guy like i'll just play a deck and then speed up or slow down whatever but when she said that so many things came into my head and i realized that like that was when i started hating number systems mm -hmm. like i love jimmy and josh i, I love like numbers how that all is but the numbers so are meaningless. so bad they're horrible. It's a subjective system. It, it, it's a moving target. What the hell is a seven? Who knows? I, exactly. Right. I understand the purpose and the design and all that stuff, but like, it's just not good. But if you have a subset of like, you don't even need a lot of questions. You need like four. Yeah. Right. Like, what do you want out of the game? What's your win condition? Right. I don't even know how you get there. Right. 
Your win condition could be thoracal. There's a million ways to get to that. I I, I don't. I just want to know. Yeah, like I don't want you to give me an essay. I don't yeah. need an essay on your it's deck. I don't so need. A, easy. I don't need a primer. I don't need you to <laughs> like. You don't need to give me your secret tech. Any yeah. of that. I just want to know, like, yo, like I come out and like, look, my my Titania deck wins by throwing its lands away and going alpha strike. It's also yeah. got land destruction in it because that's part of just how Titania works. Are you okay with that? Yes. No. Yeah. No. Okay. I've got my Enchantress deck. My Enchantress deck is a Voltron deck. Mm-hmm. It's just gonna come out and it's gonna swing and it's gonna hit you for it's a lot and draw a lot of cards, right? Yeah. Like it's gonna do two boss of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's the extent of it. You don't know what's in my deck. You yeah. know the general gist and the dimension. If I come out and say like, okay, well, you know what? I'm gonna be playing a Thalia mono white stacks deck. You know enough. Okay. You know whether you like this or not. You know whether this is the game you want to sign up for. Yeah. And if that's a no. I can pull out something else or we can just go find a different place to play. Yeah. And I mean, people should be encouraged and empowered to do that as well. Like I think for so long, it was the intent of not the intent, but we didn't have these open discussions where it was like, ask the questions before you sit down at the table, you're encouraged and empowered to be able to just like pack your stuff and go somewhere else. That's fine. Um, One of the things people that... like wear that stuff on their sleeve, like, oh, I would just want to play Thalia Stacks. Like, well, okay, understand what you're playing and understand that it's not for everyone, and don't take it personally if someone's just like, it's not for me. If you're you, playing, if you bring out a Slivers deck, you know that you're going to be the one that everybody's targeting because everybody's seen what Slivers do when you yeah. get three of them on the table. If you're ready for that, sweet. If you're not ready for that, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah. It's like be a, you understand got, and, what you're doing, understand yes. what they're doing and understand how other that. people are going to feel about what you're doing. Yes. Right. Like yep. one of the things that Toby Elliott on the rules committee told me uh, that I find to be one of the most important things uh, he said is no magic is better than bad magic. And when he writes it out, it makes it sound like he's saying, oh, nothing is better than playing bad magic. No, no, that's not what he means. What he means is not playing magic. And doing something else is better than spending two hours of your time suffering. Yeah. Right. Like if I sit down and I like the story I always refer back to was like one of my first experiences with Leovold. And I was up (laughs) at PAX in 2016 and I sit down at this table that I realized now with proto CDH, they're all sitting there and they're getting ready to just like one guy's got like uh, obviously a Leovold deck. The other person's playing like, you know, take turns deck, like a mono blue control deck with all the turns. The other one playing some of like wheels deck. And these guys were obviously playing CDH and I'm here with my dinky soldiers tribal and (laughs) I am the one ruining the table. I thought for a long time, I'm like, look at these pump stompers destroying and like they're playing Leovold and it's an awful card. And I'm like, but in hindsight, I'm like, wait a second. Those are three dudes who knew what they wanted. And then my silly butt sat down and said, Hey, I'm going to play like, you know, draft trash tribal who wants in and they we didn't have the language to sit there and say like hey you're not going to have fun at this table and they I were think, right i didn't it was miserable one of the worst yeah. games i ever played in my life yeah but the fault was my fault because i tanked their table yeah i think i think kind of pulling it into current time we have so many different tools at our, our our disposal. We've had so many different conversations. We've had so many different like things happen and people in the RC and all of this other stuff that there's no longer, but we don't run into those situations as often. They still happen, but they're, they're still here. Uh, not as often. Mm. I think CDH has done an incredible job of, literally sitting down at the table and very rarely do I see anybody or a player walk into a pod and just pull out a deck and go. The first statement is, Hey, are you guys playing C? And just, we level set right then and there. Boom. And then if you're not, we'd like, okay, well, you guys still looking for a fourth. And then if that's what it, okay, well, what what level are you guys playing? Like, what, what are you guys doing? And C level players, and I don't mean to draw a line or, you know, make this fancy Venn diagram of what we are and you are and where we're all in the middle. Yeah. We're all the same thing. Okay. We're all in the same bubble. We're just shouting at each other from different sides. That's just the way this goes. Right. But C level players have 
dissected so many different cards and so many different layers and so many different things that oftentimes what you'll see out of a competitive player is we'll ask you what your commander is Mm -hmm. and we'll start there because if you just tell me what your commander is and what the rules text is we can kind of we can get a gauge right right we can kind of predict where you're at versus a casual player that's got like a thousand questions because you don't know what yidris is because cascade is weird right like there's a there's a gap there and what i'm finding recently especially with the teacher's box and you know cdhu and the seminar series and all these different things that we're we're piecing together with competitive players is we're using that more to the other players advantage rather than our own we're not trying to collect information so we can win the game we're trying to get the information so that we don't sit down and ruin your afternoon right right and it's it's been so nice to see it and i think one that's why they're you know we're no longer shrouded in the veil of pub stomp right yeah to exactly. the, the next the next puzzle that we're trying to solve is how do we bring people into this and introduce them to it so instead of us our initial problem of we're pub stompers we don't want to be we've mm-hmm. solved that now it's okay we have our community we're at 10 people we want to get to 100 how do we do that and that's where the teacher's box cdhu eminence the tournament series playing with powers online series chaos tournament all these different things are gauged to help people get introduced to this environment that before the last two years really was not a thing so much. Cause like, I think what you said is correct. And in our discussions before you've noted that there is just a grand like upping of power level overall in EDH yeah. where people are playing closer and closer and closer to the CEDH borderline without understanding that they're there just yeah. because of, power creep or following content creators Mm -hmm. or like um they're just getting better cards or they're learning how to play the game better or their their friends just want to like punch each other harder right like these are all things and so you see like tables are getting faster and faster and faster people are playing more and more powerful cards obviously my goal here on casual magic is try to get people to crank the other direction but that being said i can't fight against the tide and the truth is the truth if the tide is rising if the people are playing faster it behooves us to get them to a place where they can play at a level that is acceptable to them yeah. while the, without like muddying the pool. Right. And um, I think the, because you're right. A lot of people don't understand how close they're playing to CDH, but they'll be like, Oh, I hate CDH. I totally, you know, like those guys are garbage. I'm like, Oh yeah. Well, what's in your deck is like, well, you know, we rule zero in a, uh, like we rule, rule zero in flash so i can play the flash hulk uh, th- historical <laughs> i'm like bruh bruh yeah. Yeah, 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 <laughs> like let's yeah, let's yeah. talk for a second let's or talk like, about uh, flash winner real quick yeah. run that one back but yeah I, or like oh yeah you know i've got ad nauseum or i've got like what the hell is that one that exiles the top 10 card to your library and then you tutor do you want a oh, consultation yeah console like, chain impact all of those yeah, yeah, yeah it's like yeah i've got three free counter spells in my deck and like Mm, well, you, you mm, see that mm, even mm. in casual magic now is you'll see that because they, they lean on the crutch of, uh, okay, my commander has to be out, right? That's like usually your first free magic is my commander has to be out. If it's not out, it cost me three, right? It's an interesting dynamic. And what, I, what I've been seeing is CDH has slowed down, right? Mm. We're, we're into the turn five, six, seven range. Versus where we were at, which is, you know, two, turn zero three, with flash. right? Turn <laughs> zero with flash, right? Um, but casual magic has started to get faster. And that's an, it's an interesting puzzle to solve because on one end, it's okay. We're all doing the same thing. We're all trying to get there the same way. However, you know, we want to slice the pie. It's to win as fast as we can. And we're consistently falling within the six to seven range here. Sometimes we're over, sometimes we're under. But the casual magic meta is so huge and it, it's undefined. I don't even know you could you call it a meta. You can't, exactly, right? You can't call it a meta, really. But everything, because of the power level of cards and all this other stuff, it's starting to creep down to get faster and faster. So you can still do all of the, as as we've affectionately called it, the Goober tier magic. But instead of it being on turn 12, you can do it on turn 8. <laughs> and that's when people are starting to be like, oh, my deck is just, wow, really popping off tonight. Oh, it popped off three games out of four. Oh my goodness, it did it again the next week. And before you know it, you're like, okay, my is my deck just really, really good? And then you have somebody like me show up and say, okay, play me. Let's let's 
walk through this. I'm like, okay, so you're about three cards off of a database list. <laughs> this is this is what it is, right? And you've done a fantastic job getting there on your own. But let's walk through this because I want you to understand that the thing that's holding you back and the reason why you're going to turn eight and not turn six is some of the decisions you're making. If you look at these things in this way, and then all of a sudden, boom, they're off to the races. CDH, <laughs> here we go. And, the, and they love it. Or again, or they're like, they Yo, take whoa, all the tutors no... out. They take all the right. fast man out. Everything comes out. And they're just like, nope. Oh, this isn't for the life. game I wanted to play. <laughs> Whoops, let me pull back and because yeah. like, look, some, it's important to sometimes have a gut check. That's mm-hmm. one of the reasons why I always like to give my deck list to other people to edit. Because then I'm like, hey, you know what kind of power level I'm playing at? Can you help make sure that I'm trying to get there yeah. and like keep me off of my ridiculousness? Because mm-hmm. sometimes I'll put cards in decks that I'm just like, oh, this will be cute and innocuous, and then for the levels that I'm playing at, it'll just be a blowout, or it'll just be... like my first ter- my first Titania build was a Turbo Ponza. It had like every land destruction <laughs> land in it. It was just all about completely nuking yeah. all the, like Neverall's disc and all these things. And I was like, wow, I'm playing just like. I'm murder hateful. magic. Someone wronged me. This yeah, is like bad. I'm playing very hateful <laughs> magic here. Let me like rejigger yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. And that's important to do. It's important to have like, because earlier I said that there's no meta. That's not true. Your meta is your table. And the thing is, we on the RC and the CAG don't control your table and don't want to control your table. You are willing, you are blessed to do whatever you want to do. You and your buds can sit there and jam out as hard as you want. We exist to make sure that when you leave that bubble and you yeah. go and meet somebody at a store or at a con or at an event yeah. or on spell table or whatever it is that you guys are, because now it's two separate universes that are colliding yeah. and we have to make sure that we're all on the same page. And it's tricky because your seven might be my 37, right? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. you got, like I've played against people. It's like, oh yeah, this is like a four or five at my table. And I'm looking, it's like, bruh, you've got Armageddon and Elspeth and like all your lands go indestructible on turn four. And then you nuke. Yeah. It's great against like all the, I'm like, I'm not sure this is a four. (laughs) It's like, it doesn't win that often. I'm like, what are you playing against? Oh, you know, Nijila. I'm like, okay, well against Slimefoot, you're going to decimate me. (laughs) It's going to be a bad time for everybody. Yeah. But I mean, that again goes back to like, having the rule zero discussion, making sure that we're being transparent about what we want to do, but also understanding the things that are in your deck are capable of doing the things that you may or may not know, right? Some people are running breach brain freeze and an led, but don't understand that when you line those things up, right. Things get real <laughs> weird. Right. So, and they don't get that until you sit down with them and you walk them through that whole process. And that's, that's the trick, right? Rebel's a great example of this. We were at uh, Command Fest Philly um, and we were playing CEDH and we had a newer newer player with us um, and they didn't know how to walk through the breach lines. So well, Rebel just sat down. Yeah, and Rebel just sat down and said, okay, let's, let's, these are the things that you have. You know the cards, you know what the cards do, but you don't know how to layer them. So that is where you find people that are like, playing a cedh deck but don't know that they're playing a cedh deck yeah right they don't know that rael and breakthrough are like you get to see 12 cards if you cast a breakthrough for one blue on rael right it's like 18 times better than an ancestral recall it, that, that's just the way it is but unless you know those interactions and those layers and all that other stuff breakthrough it, as in the draw four cards then choose x in your hand and discard it oh yeah yeah what all right you draw four huh? You pitch four, you draw four. Whenever you discard one or more cards the first time, you draw that many cards. Yeah, so you get to see like eight to 12 cards deep. And if a lot of times you cast Breakthrough and you still have a full hand. So if you keep a grip of like three cards that you're just like mediocre on, or they're part of a breach line, you can just dip the cards out and then you draw that many. So you could draw four have like seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, whatever cards, pitch them all and then draw 12. Boom. You're 16 cards deep in your deck and it costs you one blue mana. Right? Like people don't know that wait, until wait, you wait, have wait, this wait, discussion. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Hang on a second here. Hang on a second. Cause I, I'm, I need to understand this cause this is weird. So breakthrough is the sorcery. It costs X and a blue draw four cards and then choose X cards in your hand and then discard the rest. Okay. Yeah, fine. So you just, so you draw four get rid cards of all of them. and then you pitch the whole thing, pitch the whole thing. But 
the point is because Rhea the Ever Wise is, you know, the the one blue red um human wizard O3. And it says, whenever you discard one or more cards the first time each turn, draw that many cards. Is this yeah. all part of the first time? So you draw yeah. four cards, discard like 12 of them or whatever. Yep. And, and you then draw 12. You draw 12. Oh. Yeah, see, that moment right there, that one you're having right now, is the one that everybody has at the tables. They're like, oh, my God. What and why? Where? What? <laughs> and you're like, okay, yeah, so you can do that kind of stuff. Now, if you don't want to, that's fine. I would just suggest making sure that you take that out of your deck because that gets real stupid or to the point you made earlier of you don't need to play the best thing. You don't need to do the best line. You can kind of sculpt your hand mm. to say, I don't need to pitch 12 cards. I can just pitch like four. Cause I like these other ones. They're okay. And then you draw four, whatever it is. Right. So it's stuff like that where people don't understand the layers that go through to it they they don't think like three to four steps beyond they're just like i like this and boom well or like they yo i went to edh record it. it looked like there were 12 decks that i mean there were like 15 percent of the decks are using this card i should do it it's like you don't understand that those 15 percent are like moxfield cedh lists yeah and like yeah yeah well, they're doing this. <laughs> yeah it's like when I go, like <laughs> I, exactly that but it's like when i look at like an a commander that I'm building and I go through it and I see like, Oh, there's all these weird cards in here. What do they do? I was like, Oh, those are all CDH auto includes that mm -hmm. matter for this specific thing. But if I put yeah. them on my deck, it's going to just upend my table and make everybody unhappy. And it's yeah. like, okay, let's talk about this. Right. Um, but that's what the teacher's box is for. Yeah. So, that's what CDHU is for the so seminar let's, let's, series. Let's, all let's that stop stuff. for a second here and let's explain what, cause you've mentioned this a few times. Uh, can you talk about what this CDHU and the seminar thing is? Uh, sure. Yes. So CDHU is to have this kind of discussion with new players that come into the meta. So a lot of times we're going we're gonna to dive into some fun, exciting bird app shenanigan right here. So people hop onto Twitter. Let's just call them Judy. Judy hops onto Twitter and says, hey, I want to play CDH. Someone help me out. Shivam's going to come in there and say, hey, I have the CDH deck. It's awesome. It's the best thing I've ever played ever in my life. I'll walk you through every line. I'll spend every hour for the next four days helping <laughs> you out, right? Yeah. You have that happen, but 400 times. Every list is different. Half of those lists have primers written by people that have played 300 games on them, right? So we have we have the Gitrog situation, right? You're just lost at this point. So CDHU is to take all of the noise and get rid of all of that. And it gives people that are interested in CEDH a place to go to one, either figure out if they're really interested in it. And if so, we walk you through like a couple different things. We, we talk to you about what you do play currently and what you would enjoy playing. We give you some deck lists to work through. Mm. We brew with you. We, we have the Rael breakthrough conversation of like, okay, this is, this is how this happens. Right. Or, we explain to you those things and you go, you know what? That's actually not really for me, but I want to get close. And we go, okay, well, these, all right. So this is, this is more what you're looking for. It's not here, but I'm glad we've had this conversation. So you don't get lost sitting at a <laughs> table and all of a sudden your baseline's all jacked up. That's what CDHU is. We have like 550 people in there. 60 of them are mentors. So How does, is it, what, what do you mean by there? What is there? It's a discord. Sorry. Okay. Public Discord. So um, people are free to come and go as they please. Um, we've got uh, a bunch of different forum posts all broken down by color pairing so that you can actually pick a commander. If we have a, a commander in there, we have a mentor that goes with it. So if you have a, a card selection question or a line question or anything like that, you can get an answer to those things very specifically rather than asking it on Twitter. And then you have Joe say that this is the best way to do it. And then John says, no, that's not the best way to do it. And then all of a sudden we have discourse because Joe and John come from different places of the hood. Right. So it's, <laughs> it's right. We avoid that whole thing. Right. <laughs> so that's, that's what we avoid by taking all of the, the ego, all of the clout, all of the, all of the, I'm right. You're wrong. And here's why. And we boil it down to these kinds of conversations to just get you the information you want. Then we have some game channels and stuff like that. So if you want to play a game with the mentors to walk through stuff, that's available. It's all in there. 
And it's built literally to just have this conversation so that you don't have to do it in a public place where everybody's just going to scream at 120 characters for as till our eyes bleed. So cheers. That is <laughs> astonishing and amazing. And like, just sounds really fascinating because I've been talking to, I mean, obviously on my f facility as being a CAG member, I sit and have these discussions a lot with Watsi people and with other members of the community yeah. about like, what do, we, what do we have to do? How do we organize? How do we teach people? Or how do you, like even when talking with card designers, I'm like, how do you balance for Commander? It's so hard because we don't have a meta. We don't have decks you can just plug and play into. And yeah. it turns out when you're testing a card for Commander, that is now one out of 100 cards and not one out of four out of 60. Yeah. And so drawing that one card and contextually getting it into a place where you can actually see like, Oh, look, dark side <clears throat> is totally broken when I played against people who play Surprise. 65 <laughs> mana. Okay. I'm just going to go on this 10 second rant for a second. Go for it. Dark side is fine. You know why it's fine? Because it's broken at the tables. It's supposed to be broken at, and it's not broken at the tables. It's not supposed to be broken at. If I'm playing at CEDH pod and player next to me drops lotus petal and then like you know jeweled lotus and then like soul ring and mana vault and they have like 45 pieces of artifact on turn two on the table and i drop a dockside guess what i am playing at the right speed of that table <laughs> if i'm playing like my treasures deck if i played at my the, the tiers of my tables that are at i get like three or four maybe tops yeah. unless yeah. i'm lucky and playing it's like the enchantress get deck and then i get like yeah. loaded right yeah. like yeah. but otherwise like why does dark side say enchantment so that that is unnecessary it's a little it's a little busted so the problem that i have with dark side and I, i'm of two sides right i said this on the mind sculptors podcast i'll say here too i don't live in a world of absolutes i'm prepared for both sides to happen right so i'm cool with dark side existing i'm also okay if it gets banned yeah i'm right. ready for both realities so <laughs> so on the one side you have it's not so much your situation, I think, where it's like, okay, it's really good at the tables it's supposed to be really good at, and it's really bad at, well, not bad, but not as good it's in like other situations, fine. right? It's mediocre. Yeah. It's in the middle. I mean, look, it's still strong. I I'm think, not going to pretend it's not a strong card. It is strong. I think it has, I think it has the same effect that, like, you're probably, your eyes are going to get really big and you're going to go, no, 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 new guy. But like Prophet of Crufix might have had where you exactly where you brew <laughs> around that card. Yeah. Right. That's, There's a that's ton of decks that brew around Dockside. There's a ton of decks that brew around Paradox Engine, Iona, all of those cards that are on that magical prime time is the key example. Here. Right. Exactly. So Dockside is bad where it's bad and it's good where it's good. But the fact that people build around it See, that's... almost exclusively in places. That, That's the, that is the thing that we are paying attention to. Like yeah. people are like, why haven't you banned Dockside? I'm like, once we start to see that at the average table, people are starting to warp their deck building around this card, yeah. like they did with Golos, like they did with Primetime, that's when it's a problem. Like when suddenly yeah. you're like, oh, I'm building ways to maximize using Dockside, like, or I'm, you know, whatever it is, then that, or it's like, or you're starting to play like, specific anti-artifact hate cards that are like really useless except against like all of your you know all your treasures coming to play yeah. chapter or something whatever it is you know like that is the situation we look for and that's the warning sign and i think yeah. i think we're getting close i don't think we're there yet i think I'm, so but that's not the point i don't want to get distracted <laughs> by docs i don't yeah, want to talk I, about yeah CU. yeah i i i will so to segue back into our appropriate conversation I will say that people make play decisions expecting certain cards to resolve like Dockside, right? Like I'm going to hold back from over committing to my board because player two might have a Dockside in his hand. We do mm. that in CDH, but we also, I'm seeing that a lot more in casual as well. We're like, do I actually need that extra mana right now? Like, am I going to do anything with that mana? And they'll hold back on their arcane signet or they'll hold back on their soul ring or their whole, whatever it is. So they're like, I don't want to feed the Dockside. No, 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 no. I don't want to do all that. And you'll see that in casual pods more. Well, I do more and more. And that's where it's starting to, in my eyes. I'm like, all right, this is definitely going to start getting some eyes At on that it point, real that's soon. A, Cause this is, that's this is getting problem. a little much. <laughs> like that's, so. that's the literal, like that is my line. Like yeah. if people are starting to do this, then the card's a problem. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, look, people are like, oh, so Dockside, you don't think Dockside? I'm like, no, Dockside is strong as hell. Dockside might be the strongest card in Commander. But, Strong cards are allowed to exist. Yeah, it's when it warps the game 
that's yeah. a problem. But anyways, who cares? Uh, that's that's not even my call to make. That's the RC's call. <laughs> um, the point, though, I'm trying to make is that you guys have built this entire system, and that is where like the challenges come for casual play. Is we don't we can't like I can't teach you how to play a Titania deck because every Titania deck is different, or yeah. like uh, maybe not Titania. Titania is kind of Titania builds itself, but like. There's like, for instance, like an aristocracy deck, or like, let's say, um, any random like you know white like, who's a vampire? Um, Edgar. Yeah, not Edgar, but like the white black one that um, that when it dies it pops into tokens. Oh, uh, Alenda. Yeah, Alenda. Like I could play an Alenda life gain deck. I could play an Alenda tokens deck. I could play an Alenda like aristocrats deck, a drain deck. There's like five different decks I could play in casual that go in all different directions, all different power levels. Um, and it's not quite as like formula, like what CEDH is starting to do now is develop the fact that it is a competitive format. It said it's competitive. It's, that's what the C in the name is, but it's acting like a competitive format. Yeah. It's acting like a legacy or a modern or a standard would in the sense of like, Hey, we have decks, we have lines, we have formulas with which we build. We have, commanders that do a thing that we understand and can build around and can use as a baseline for a like if i sit there and i tell you i'm playing you know thrasio and timna you know what that means if i say i'm playing Najila, you know what that means yeah. like if i tell you i'm playing like um i don't know some random just slime foot Slimefoot. Yeah, like, if I tell you I'm playing Slimefoot, okay, well, is he playing Thalid Tribal? Is he playing some yeah. weird budget aristocrats? What's going on? Yeah. Or, like, Tatyova. I'm just playing Simic Value. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Late, uh, I'm playing Magic. <laughs> yeah, like, it's a painted in the, the casual side. So we we have that as well, and I've spent a lot of time, like, introducing new players to, to casual and just playing EDHs because my meta, I had a meta for probably six or seven years, and then they they've all kind of, like, moved or we've moved online and now i don't have like people to play with live so i've spent some time trying to figure out how to have this discussion with people that haven't played and it really came down to like some again like the rule zero questions like what do you like to do like are you a puzzle person because like storm might be for you then are you like everybody needs to play at the pace that i'm comfortable with because then maybe you're kind of blue white stacksy control list type thing right or mm. I'll have that like two headed giant is great for this or like a mentor mentee kind of game where like, mm. okay, watch me do the thing. If you like the thing, I'll let you do it next and I'll help you do it too. Right. And yes, that's kind of what CDHU is, but you can do it in a casual pod as well where you're like, okay, I have Titania. So I brew Titania bro storm. Mine's not lands weirdness, right? I use it to abuse the ETBs and get, lands back and like do twiddle storm type stuff with it huh. right malachite talisman list, by the way do, do you know malachite talisman that's from like yeah the one that lets you untap days. cards yeah use that on a guy's cradle and then tell me how your life has oh, changed mm, mm. yeah see that see that okay. right there that's so, the good stuff <laughs> if y'all haven't seen the old talismans from like ice age or whenever the heck they were alliances i don't remember it was some one of those sets yeah. it's basically every time you cast a spell of this color like a permanent of this color pay three mana to untap target permanent of that color or target permanent you have it yeah. is so those good. cards are so, so underplayed <laughs> and they're so nutty it's it's so, good because you can use it with like a castle garenbrig you can use it with a nickthos you can use like, it with uh, i played salvala bro storm like, i like salvala bro storm a lot my i haven't tried doing plays... just a mono green one though yeah. It, well, it, I guess Salvala is a mono green. Yeah. Yeah. But I digress. But uh, the point I'm trying to make is like there is a way to have these discussions. But if you try to paint it purely by magic for somebody that's never ever seen a magic card or doesn't understand that, like you can't drive by commander because there's thousands of them. But if you drive by an archetype and can explain it in mm, a mm, sentence mm. or less, it makes it much easier to start navigating the waters a little bit. Yes. So that you can like bring people in and you don't want some hyper complicated pile, which goes back to the teacher's box, right? You don't want some hyper complicated mess of cards for these people to get lost in. You, you want to keep it clean. You want to like for as busted as Thrasios is, it is clean, right? Blue green yes. pay for scry the thing. If it's a land, put it there or draw a card. That's it. 
Okay. And then you can, you can literally scale from casual all the way up to the most busted CEDH stuff you want just on that list. Yes. You yes, need yes. nothing else. <laughs> it's good old civic value train. However you want to spell it. That's it. Right. So let's talk a little bit about the teaching box for the last few minutes we got here. Sure. Um, what decks do you have in there? So, um, I had, how did you decide? To, yeah. Deciding is the fun conversation. I think that's uh, the more important part. Yeah. So Goto, Winoda, Jessica, Ishai, um, Malcolm, Tim or Malcolm Tana, Clark, Shakashima. Clark, really? Yeah. Uh, and I have a fun story for that one. And then, um, oh God, the, um, Selesnia in trans Sethis. Sethis. Uh, she's in there as well. Um, and each of them have a point, and I'll save Kark for the last one. But Sethis is kind of like a meta call. If if somebody really likes to play Enchantress stuff, it's a good way to do that. It's like the cleanest way to show you maximum value, but still do Enchantress things, right? Without overstepping it. And the deck is good enough that it's going to hold its own, and we're happy. Goto is count to 13, but. What do you mean by 13? So Goto Helm Equip is 13. Oh, 13 mana? Yeah. Okay, so I was you, like, because that's you, not 13 yeah. life. It's a... Yeah, so you, you count to 13 if it, nothing happens, and you count to 15. And if nothing happens, you count to 17. And then you just you keep doing that. But the fun part with Goto, and I'll say this quickly before Ryan, if he's listening to this, snaps. Uh, Goto teaches you when to do things. Mm. And it also teaches you that there's multiple ways to get to that end point without you having to do the same thing repetitively. Yes, you start by go to Helm win, but then you can do Goblin Engineer things. You can start moving in your graveyard a little bit. You can start like there's multiple ways to skin that cat. Then um, Tana and Malcolm is probably the simplest explanation you can give somebody on how to win a game. Uh, Malcolm and Glinthorn Buccaneer, that's it. And you just discord, discard draw, and you just ping the table dead, and you can do it on like turn one. So it's it's a very easy combination for people to learn. Um, and then the rest of the cards in the deck hang on, just kind of hang facilitate on, hang on, that. Hang on, hang on, hang on. No, remember this is an audio podcast, so it does help to uh, explain some of the cards. I mean, yeah. Sorry, my apologies. I get excited. Yeah. So I'm Malcolm like Keenite Navigator, obviously, is a very popular commander. Uh, it's a two and a blue for a two, two flyer that whatever a pirate you control, uh, deals damage. You create a treasure token for each opponent dealt damage. It's got partner, uh, Tana, the blood tower. Tana's is, irrelevant. She's just, just there, there for, for the colors. colors. <laughs> I hate that so much. I hate that so much. Welcome to CEDH. Uh, if you, if you need something, piles, but... uh, Tana, Tana, when she does damage, you create that many, uh, one, one sapperlings. I, yeah, I love Tana as a card, but like, man, uh, same, but she's, she's. Very well, what mid. was the other one? What's the other half of that? Uh, so Glenhorn Buccaneer. Glenhorn Buccaneer, yeah. And as soon as you see it, you'll be like, oh, pirate. Glenhorn. Oh, yeah, this so card. it's a pirate. Haste, uh, a 2-4, and when you discard a card, it does one damage to each opponent. Uh, one uh, red, discard a card, draw a card, activate only if it's attacking. So with this, oh, it deals damage, and you get a treasure. Oh, that's dumb. Yeah. Well, welcome to CEDH. It gets weird out here. It's, it's yeah, but okay. So place. how do you win off of that? On like, how do you well, like? What's so the you there? you discard, ping yeah. everybody, and then because of the Glenhorn Buccaneer, you draw a card, and then you discard that card, and you ping everybody, and you make treasures every time to do it. So you could just you ping three people, so you make three treasures. You're pinging each opponent. Yeah, and then you, God damn and it. then you just and you just you, you know, just rotate all the way through, and you're good to go. So, like, you could do it on, like, turn two, and it's extremely clean. It's extremely fast, and the rest the rest of the deck is really there to just kind of, like, facilitate that. Hmm. So, it makes – it's an easy discussion to have. That's why it's in the box, right? Sure. Uh, Jessica Ishai is for anybody who wants to choose violence. Um, Jessica is uh, – Jessica Thrice Reborn. Um, her minus zero, I believe, is uh, target creature does triple damage. Uh, yeah. Then you have a minus X. Uh, which is minus X loyalty. She's a planeswalker. Sorry. She, uh, yeah. Jessica thrice reborn. Yeah. Uh, it's got a loyalty counter for each time you cast it, whatever 
zero. Choose target creature until next turn. That creature did, would deal combat damage. It does triple that. And then minus X, it does, Jessica does X damage to each of three targets. Yes. So <clears throat> there's a couple different ways to do this, right? So Ishai is the bird that every time an opponent, an opponent or whatever player, an opponent casts a spell, yeah. you put a one, one counter on Ishai. Yeah. So you can let CEDH be CEDH where it's played mainly on the stack. So by the time it gets back to you and you can swing with it, it's like a 12, 12. Mm. Um, or <laughs> you can make like a ton of mana, like it, it, theoretically infinite mana of whatever color and just infinitely recast Jessica and remove the counters and ping all of your opponents dead. You can choose either one you want to do either way. It's just aggressive bird violence to an extent. Um, right. Yeah, gnarly. So, like Jessica and Ishai is in there for that, um, and it also does breach lines and a bunch of other things. So that's where it starts to get a little intricate, where there's like 17 ways to win in this deck, but the main <laughs> one is violence and Jessica, and that's it. Um, so then, so uh, Winota's in there. Winota is an easy explanation, but teaches you kind of you get better the more times you play the deck. Um, so Winota is just turn stuff sideways look at the top six and play a human out yeah i believe that's the language right and it's a stacks it's a snowball stacks list so you just pick a human and throw it out on the board and sometimes it's like an idol out of rhetoric or something like that and that's just what it is and it's just an angry kind of aggro beach deck that controls the pacing what are you attacking with uh you can attack with winota you can attack with an ornithopter you can attack with a thopter off of like i forget what the there's a red card that gives it has Luke. Oh yeah. Cause it doesn't care about attack. It doesn't care about damage. It's just cared about the attack trigger. Yeah. Because the other creatures come in tapped and attacking. Winota just does that and enables you to have that conversation of the more times you play this deck, the more it's going to make sense and the better you're going to get at it. Um, it. Instead of it doing one thing and winning that way, you can do a ton of different things. And it's, yeah, it's a like a variety. toolbox kind of commander. Yeah. And then Krok Sakashima, the explanation is really short. Um, <laughs> if you're a storm player and I am, I play storm in everything. I play storm in modern. I play storm in legacy. I play storm. I, I built standard decks, pioneer, historic. Everything is storm to me. If you have played a storm deck, you can understand Krok Sakashima. And then it's just about giving it a go. Sometimes it's just, you have to swan dive in the pool and you're going to be okay. And if somebody's like, I want to play Krok Sakashima, I'll sit there right with them. Like, I'm not playing this game. I'm going to help them because like it gets a little messy, but it's not as messy as the people turns think it are. Is. I think the deck is really <laughs> clever. I think it's a really neat design. I think it's really interesting that somebody was able to come up with this. I find the deck deeply frustrating just because it takes <laughs> yeah. so long without having a deterministic end. And eventually, yeah, you get to just rolling enough dice or flipping enough coins to get there. But boy, that deck is. That takes a lot. It's it's a challenge. It it's 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 difficult to understand, not and from it, a card perspective, but just like why am I doing this thing? And I'm like, you just have it's have faith, have heart of the cards. It's going to be okay. <laughs> the We're problem is though, if you're playing Karkashima <laughs> and you don't know how to do this properly, those turns will be interminably long. <laughs> Once you understand, that's why you need like quickly, me quickly. to sit there and be like. I got you. Don't do that yet. Hang in there. Wait. Move here. Play that. Like, I never give somebody Krok Sakashima and I just say, okay, good luck. Like, no, I'm not going to get rock them. I kidding? will. Yeah. I will sit there and walk them through. I've only had two people do it. They piloted it really well. Um, I've sat there with them the whole time. And like I said, both of them have been Storm or Twiddle Storm-esque players where they kind of understand this. The do a lot in one here. turn. Yeah. Yeah. So. <clears throat> I don't know. I think I appreciate the idea, but I mean, like, okay, well, you're right though. Like that does really kind of hit the full spread of at least basic subtypes of like at least an introductory level yeah. uh, CDH. I mean, obviously you don't have stacks in there. Do you have any decks? You do. Do we know the stacks. Oh yeah. Winota sex. I'm sorry. I always forget the second half of Winota um, <laughs> because all the humans you're playing are all just like, Big tax pieces. town, right? Like, <laughs> they're all just like tax collectors over there, and alms collectors, and people yeah. who are just make your life miserable collectors. Idol on um, a rhetoric. You can only draw one card. You can yeah. only play one thing. Uh huh. We're going to mm -hmm. play by the rules, sir. 
That's correct. Slowly <laughs> and steadily. Yeah. Um, but like, for instance, do you, I mean, like how many of these decks run like ad nods type of things or like, no, um, I like have no black decks things? in the, in the box. Why not? Isn't that like a big core common way to do this? So wouldn't you want people to I learn think how to do you, Oracle I th- Yes. I think you miss out when your explanation on how to do a thing is just showing them the stereotype that they've already mm. picked up. So a lot of people, when they start thinking about CDH, are like, I don't want to just Thor go win. That's boring. Mm-hmm. I don't want to put that in the teacher's box because I don't want them to be like, yeah, that's exactly what CDH is. You got it. And then move on. Right. Ad nauseum is a strong card, but unless you know how to play in ad nauseum and where Holy. to stop, it can, it where can to ruin stop. your day. Right. right? Um, you know, PETA is a strong card. Knowing how to use that card appropriately is more important than even some of the stuff you draw off of it sometimes. Which right? one? So, uh, PETA. Oh, Peer into the Abyss. Yeah. So, like, I also don't do the um, blind tutors, right? So, the mono black tutors that are, you know, Vampiric Tutor, Demonic Tutor, Imperial Seal, all of those, where it's going to the deck and pick out anything, that's, it's a lot of information all at once. And sometimes you don't know where to go and what to pick. Mm-hmm. So I find that that doesn't help you kind of educate in any way, shape or form either. Now, there are some people that are extremely good pilots in that world. And I encourage anybody to build their own teacher's box. And if you want to have every deck be a black deck, that's perfectly fine. Just for me and my experience and the way that I've done things is I try to stick to the things that, you know, we can win. We can win in interesting ways. And I don't want to meet them at a stereotype. I want to kind of break that from them. And like, yeah, you're going to run into console Thoracle all the time. And that's fine. But you're now you're going to understand counter spells. You're going to understand what Eshide does. Mm, mm. You're going to understand how to do all these things. And you'll, you'll get there. It'll be all right. Yeah. Like, I think that's, I mean, <clears throat> mind you, those are leading questions I was asking you to try to get you here. Sure. But it's sure. just like, I think that's a brilliant idea because the idea is A, you want to teach people how to play the common ways to play the game. Mm-hmm. B, you want to show them that there's not just the one, yeah. right? Like it's not a one deck format. There's a whole variety here and there's room yeah. for exploration. I mean, maybe there's room for less exploration, but there is still room to be no, able to get creative. CDH is more diverse now than I think it's ever been. I think and that's a it's, factual statement. <laughs> I think that the, the community has done a great job <clears throat> of finding new ways and to use these cards. And like, even like you look at things like Dargo or like all these things that like I think like people are gonna start digging into Baldur's Gate and finding just nutty oh, yeah. stuff that we haven't seen yet. And I don't know. I think I think there's a lot of promise here and there's a lot of hope. And yeah. um yeah, I mean I think what you're doing on this project and everything is really, really cool. I Thank think you. it's a really genius way to demystify and like to take a lot of the stigma of what it means to be CDH out yeah. of the question. It's like, look, we're not here to be like just speedy pup stumpy jerks we're here because we want to play competitive level you know strong magic against each other let me teach you how to do that i think that is such a better thing to do like it took me a long time to get to this point of realizing that cedh needs to exist because cedh needs to exist because we need because there's always going to be competitive magic players and as all the other formats collapse and they come here and like those old vintage players and legacy players are like looking for cutthroat fun time magic I have a place to put them now. I have a place to say, hey, go Come here, <laughs> use those decks you've got. You only need one of the four cards you do, and you can sure. still do that. Go and have fun and live that life. And it's great because I don't want to turn people away. I want everybody to play Commander. I want you all to everybody to enjoy it. But I want everybody to be on the same page. And I yeah. want people to be playing at the level that is most <clears throat> fun for them. And yeah. having an introductory way to say, hey, go explore CDH. Here's a bunch of resources. Here's a bunch of things you can do. Because like sometimes people will come in and they'll just build a deck in EDH. And it's just like, these are all my favorite cards. And they're all just like mono black hand destruction or something. And I'm like, yeah. okay, I get it. I appreciate it. There's a place you can play that. Yeah. Maybe this isn't the table. Maybe let's Maybe crank it back one. a notch. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. you only need one hypnotic specter and not 17. <laughs> uh, but we can work on that, right? Yeah. I don't know. I think I think having this teaching box, I think having this like Discord Academy, I think having all of these tools to give people a place 
to explore and enjoy is incredibly smart. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I will say something just personally about me is I'm of the same vein as you just, in, I guess, in a different side of the coin. It's, I, I want to expand EDH. I want everybody to have a home. I play Goat Tribal and I play CEDH. I do both things. I love both things. Mm-hmm. I understand where the gap is in the middle and that's where I live. You know, there's all there's, you know, I love Jim from the Spike Feeders. He's a per- CEDH perspective. He plays CEDH and that's the thing. He does casual, but he's CEDH and here we are. And then we have other people that play Goat Tribal and, and, and Goober Stompy and that's what we do over here. And in the middle, there's this gap and that's where I find myself most often of trying to help people understand where they're supposed to go when they, when they don't know. And it's not like you're supposed to be over here and you're supposed to be over there. It's let me help you find your way Yes, because you'll be happier at the end of that rather than you just in this cloudy abyss. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Instead of just saying like, we just have commander. It's like, no, we have different flavors you can find. Yeah. Let's find the one that fits you best. Yeah. And that's, I, I love to do that. That's my thing. That's what I do professionally. My career, I train people on how to do hyper complicated software things. Mm-hmm. Right. So I just apply that to EDH. Do you want to go here? Or do you want to go there? This is what you'll find. Welcome. Mm. I love you regardless. Here we go. <laughs> love to hear it, man. This has been a fantastic conversation. Thank you so much for joining me today. No problem. And if people wanted to find you or learn more about CDHU or anything like that, where could they go? Yeah, so uh, if you want to talk to me personally, I'm StormCount120 on Twitter. And if you want to get, <laughs> I told you, <laughs> uh, if you want to get uh, CEDHU, it's CEDH University on Twitter. If you want to get onto the Eminence account, uh, it's Eminence MTG. Uh, you can find all of the links to anything through any of those three places. Um, the Bird app, as much as people think it's the worst place on the planet, actually does its job if you know how to draw lines in the sand. So, <laughs> boy, uh, I thought, but anyways, <laughs> as always, my friends, you can find me at Gear Report Gears. You can find this podcast anywhere podcasts are sold or at Cool Stuff Inc. on Tuesdays or at YouTube on Thursdays. Thank you, EK. And remember, my friends, it is not magic without the gathering. And we will see you next time.